everyone, I'm Olivia Chia. I'm turning 12 this year and I'm very pleased to meet you. I am a voracious reader and writer and I can't wait to share some of my experiences with you. The inspiration just came as a result of some idle googling on the internet. One day, I was a little bored, so I just did some random searches on the internet and the frequently searched topic about whether or not mermaids had kneecaps just popped up on the screen. And if you come to think about it, it really is quite a fascinating topic. And I think it's quite amusing to see how some people will go to great lengths to prove their points. From writing even just small but persuasive comments or even writing a whole essay on it. And I find that very, well, just exciting. And at around that period of time, I was also very into the fantasy genre. So I thought it would be fun to write about mermaids, but with a local twist. I didn't do a lot of planning when I first started writing it. I only had a general idea of how I wanted each paragraph to be like and then I just let it flow as I went along. I started with the concept of a fantasy about mermaids with local flavour. Since Singapore is surrounded by water, I thought it would be quite natural. Then I only plan it one paragraph at a time, which is actually why in my first few drafts, my character was actually nameless. It was only during my edits that I go back and give the character a name. Normally, I just give myself a basis on what the ending will be like and what the beginning is going to be like and then I fill up the context as I go along. Having a free-flowing writing style can be a little bit of a challenge if you're time-bound. Um, since you have a free-flowing writing style, although it doesn't restrict how your story develops, sometimes um, you get a little bit of a writer's block because since you didn't plan, a lot of your content can be a little bit messy and it doesn't click very well. Which is why you must have the luxury of time to go back and do a lot of edits. And that's quite hard work. For example, in earlier drafts of my story, I realized that the antagonist actually didn't appear until the later paragraphs. So in my edits, I had to go back and find a way to input this antagonist into the earlier parts of my story without messing up a lot of the other content that I wrote into the other paragraphs. So that was a little bit of a challenge for me. However, if you have the time and are prepared to do the hard work of multiple revisions, it can be quite rewarding. Finally, I think the good thing about writing the fantasy genre is that you don't really have to be extremely pedantic about being realistic and having everything make sense. But what I did have to watch out for was how to subtly introduce local flavour into fantasy and mermaids without it seeming too contrived. I didn't have much to reference against, but I had to check myself to make sure it didn't sound too forced and localised for the sake of being localised. This year, I'm in my primary six year of primary school. It's going to be quite busy for me and I don't have a lot of time to write as I have to prepare for my PSLE examinations. However, I still try to read as much as I can as it helps me to relax and it takes my mind off the stress of schoolwork. I did start keeping a digital diary in which I write my thoughts and sometimes rants. The contents are often silly, although I do plan on keeping them personal. I am also open to any competitions that might come my way this year. I have a few tips. One of them is being curious and gaining as much knowledge as possible. It doesn't only apply to reading various genres as widely as possible. Even just watching different types of programs or keeping up with current affairs and watching all kinds of content on YouTube or other platforms can widen your perspectives, 
especially if it's on a topic that you're interested in. Having a lot of ideas in your head is the key to writing creatively. Or at least that's how I justify all the time I spent watching and reading all kinds of junk. It's never a waste of time. Another thing is all writers will suffer from writer's block every now and then. It is normal. One little trick I have, which seems to work for me at least, is to type out my first draft in white font. Well, that's if you are using Word document like I usually do. So when you do this, you can't see what you're writing. And it seems to keep me focused enough that I don't go back to do a lot of editing while I'm still writing. After I finish the full draft, then I turn the font back to black before reviewing and editing it. And I think when you do this, it's a lot easier to finish your first draft to get it over and done with. And it's more calming for me because I don't immediately spot a lot of mistakes that I make. And this really works for me on days that I find it especially difficult to squeeze out a story. Of course, if you do really face a lot of this difficulty on some days, you can also choose to take a break. There will be good days and bad days, and the trick is to make most of the good days count. Focus on getting the best out of those times by not getting distracted and milking the most out of the creative juices when they are flowing, because you never know when they will dry up. The warm water submerged my body, soaking me in its comforting heat relaxing my tensed muscles. Unconsciously, I let out a satisfied sigh. For some reason, I've always had a thing for water. The work at Nanyang Polytechnic was difficult, so whenever I was stressed out and obsessing over my schoolwork, like now, a relaxing warm bath would calm me down. The polycarbonate bathtub I lay in was slightly stained, but otherwise in good condition. My aunt had bought it from an antique shop nearby where we lived in Ang Mokyo. She always told me it was magical, but I never believed her. Magic was not real. It was just a childish explanation for things people could not understand. This was one second before my life took a strange turn and changed forever. I felt the cold hand of a certain solid something slide over my hand to grip it. It held my wrist in a vice-like grip nearly cutting off the circulation. The chill slid over my hand, then my forearm. I felt my body tilt sideways. Cold, dark fear gripped my heart, freezing me inside out, flushing the warmth from the placid bath water out of my body. I whipped my head round to face my arm, heart thumping like a professional drummer would bang a fast beat on a drum. My beloved hand was sinking through the polycarbonate. Panicking, I struggled and fought to pull my hand out of the polycarbonate beast, but to no avail. My lips contorted in fear and produced a shriek, piercing through the neighborhood like a samurai's katana. Soon, my entire left arm, left foot, and torso had already been devoured, lodged in solid wall, as if it were a mold and I its product. Before I knew it, my entire form had sunken through the polycarbonate's bathtub. All I could do was lay there helplessly in shock and horror, on the verge of tears. The very moment before the solid, man-eating material was closing over my pockmarked and acne-covered face, I gave up and accepted my fate, pushing the fear and confusion that was clawing at my heart down. I knew I was going to die here. I knew it. <laughs>